Hey, hey, Marcus House with you here, and what an amazing few days it has been for SpaceX. We today had a successful 20 meter Starhopper launch. We also had an interesting attempt at that yesterday, which is the footage you're watching here right now. Uh, but also today, we had another incredible CRS mission to the space station, which has launched beautifully, of course, with the booster making its way back to the landing site to touch down. Now, last week I made a video about the very impressive speed of development that we've seen here with Starhopper and Starship. If you haven't seen that video yet, there is a link popping up in the top right for you now. And just a few quick notes on the comments that I've had from that video. Now, there are, of course, a large number of fans out there that are super eager to cheer SpaceX on and celebrate all that they've achieved over the last year especially. But there's a heck of a lot of people trying to discredit projects such as the Starhopper and the Starship prototype saying that they are rushed pieces of junk. Now, I don't think any of these people seem to comprehend how amazing all of this is. I think the fact that SpaceX release all of this test footage is just something that people are really not very used to seeing. The general public I don't think seem to appreciate that failure and rapid prototypes are a great thing. But I tell you, what we are seeing here is incredible. Absolutely incredible. The most amazing thing about the Starhopper, in my opinion, is the fast development and iteration of the Raptor engine itself, which has obviously been a huge technical challenge given that the Raptor is a full flow staged combustion cycle engine fueled with liquid methane and liquid oxygen. There is no other engine of this type that has ever flown. So today's milestone with the Starhopper actually taking off and landing after a 20 meter flight it's a huge deal simply for the Raptor engine component here itself. Now what we're seeing here is the aborted test from yesterday's attempt. Still some really nice footage to include here though. Essentially the engines fired up here and quickly shut down with Elon later tweeting that the reason for the aborted attempt was that the chamber pressure was higher than it was intended to be due to the colder than expected propellant. Again, of course, people seemed super fast to throw some more opinions on what they saw as a huge failure. Again, though, not a failure. It was a test. These tests are designed to, you know, test things. So this was all streamed live by SpaceX. It didn't go 100% to plan, but there was no major issue with this attempt. And we did get to see some pretty impressive venting here. And another wonderful shot here from Tim, the everyday astronaut who was out on site filming as well from another angle. Beautiful footage here, Tim. Thanks very much for being out there on site waiting for all this to occur so we can get some more awesome shots of it. And then today, of course, we had the successful flight, which was also captured by Tim here. I will show you the tweets that Elon sent showing some different angles of this, but this was probably some of the clearest footage of the plume itself. Uh, really beautiful there. We can just see the Starhopper just peeking out from the top of the uh, plume there. And then everything goes dark for a bit as it slowly settles back down on the ground. So very interesting footage. Didn't get to see a lot of the Starhopper itself. Elon Musk did also tweet out a few different angles of this same test flight, which we've got up here at the moment. Sadly, the quality of the footage that he tweeted was really terrible, just potato quality, but we can see a little more from this angle here. It certainly does look like the Starhopper reached that full 20 meters. Sadly though, the plume again obscures the camera from the landing shot itself. After the plume here clears, we do get to see the Starhopper sitting nicely here on the pad. Another shot here from Elon shows the footage from a camera mounted just by the engine. And this is actually, even though it's again potato quality, a really beautiful shot of everything going on underneath. You can see just how high up the Starhopper hopped up there. And then a nice controlled descent and touch down there on the ground. A lot more vibration as it gets close to the ground. It is interesting actually watching this as it launches up. A lot of vibration in the camera there. And then as soon as it gets up off the ground, everything becomes smoother for the camera. And uh, yes, all that vibration goes away. Elon Musk, of course, tweeted out that the flight was successful and that water towers can fly. And then he was very quick to point out that the very next test should be a 200 meter hop in a week or two. So that is going to be really exciting. A 200 meter hop is going to mean that we're well outside of that plume area. We're gonna get lots of nice footage of that. 
we should also hopefully have another day flight for that one as well. So yes, that should be much clearer than the 20 meter flight we just had there. It looks to me like the Starhopper itself is only around 20 meters in height there anyway. Now, as far as I know, SpaceX have got a current filing that allows them to fly to an altitude of around 25 meters or so. So we should keep an eye out for a new filing for that 200 meter launch. Of course, also today we got to see SpaceX's 18th commercial resupply service mission. There are now only two contracted flights left for NASA out of this initial 20. The launch today was to deliver essential supplies to the International Space Station. All of that, of course, packed nice and tightly there into the reusable Dragon 1 cargo vessel. In the external trunk today, they actually also had a new international docking adapter, which was there to replace the one that was sadly lost back in the CRS-7 launch failure. So some sped up footage here as the plume expands, getting up towards stage separation. Of course, then main engine cut off and we see the second stage there fire up beautifully with the earth there in the background. Just beautiful. I, I just love this shot every single time I see it. We then, of course, watched that first stage head back to do its entry burn. And what I noticed actually was that the entry burn readout there on the progress bar seemed quite a long way out, considering that the entry burn didn't start happening until about now, so that was a long way off. Anyway, this is obviously very sped up footage as we come down to land, and I'll just slow it down here just for that beautiful landing shot. Terminal guidance. You see the landing legs are deploying. Falcon has landed, running off there between Sidrillo and Dot 100. And the Falcon has landed. Congratulations to everyone here at SpaceX for another successful landing. For those of you keeping score, this is our 44th successful first stage recovery. This is our secondary mission at SpaceX. It's so yes, another wonderful mission there. We then got to see the cargo dragon there beautifully separating and heading off to catch up with the International Space Station, which we'll hopefully hear news of in the next day or two. So I hope you enjoyed that quick news update. Thanks for watching. Please do take a second to like and share. Also, a massive thank you to my very awesome quality control squad here. If you're interested in these topics and would like to help out, follow my Discord link in the description and join us in there. In the tile in the bottom left today, we have my compilation video from SpaceX's achievements over the last decade or so. It sure has been an incredible ride. In the top right is my latest video, and in the bottom right, a video that YouTube has selected from my channel just for you. Thank you all for watching, and we'll see you all in the next video.